Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In case you're new here, my name is Kim. This is Core Union. I wanted to share another amazing email from one of my awesome clients. We had our session and she told me all of this wonderful, wonderful stuff that happened with her and her specific person. And her specific person is actually her husband. Before I do get into this, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you love my content, if you want me to be your coach, email me a short description to kim at coreunion.com. I'll reply back to you with my next available session after you've booked with me at my website, coreunion.com. You can do a 30 minute or a package. Most people do end up doing the package because it's really affordable. This is, I asked her to email me. So this is what she wrote. And I am going to read it through. I might not include everything. So if I kind of pause or anything, then just bear with me. I'm going to try not to edit or spend too much time editing this video. So just going to try to make this just kind of raw and real. So I'm just going to read this. Before our session yesterday, the last time we spoke, I had mentioned that I had a bit of movement. It wasn't groundbreaking, but it was movement nonetheless, and I was grateful for it and know that I created it. And I'll just pause right there for one second just to remind everybody that we're not technically creating anything. Yes, we always use the words, I'm a powerful creator of my reality, and that's very empowering. Technically speaking, everything, all of creation already exists, and your dominant focus and awareness on something allows you to see it in your reality. You're able to see it and experiencing it when experience it when you're dominantly selecting it. Okay. So it's not, yes, we always will use the word creating, but I do like to make that distinction just because it's kind of an important fundamental from my perspective of manifesting. At least it's always helped me in in remembering that. Okay. So what had okay, so I knew that I created the movement. What had happened was that for my own mental health and well-being, I had made it so when my SP was picking up our children, I would go upstairs and stay out of the way so as to not get into any kind of situation. I really needed it to be no contact, but because of the kids, I couldn't. So this was my compromise for myself. Anyway, this was around four weeks ago, and he ended up shouting up, could he come in and use the loo? <laughs> so the restroom. And she mentioned that she knew that was just an excuse to come in. So he did. And he was then talking to her. He was saying he likes my nails. Am I okay? Is work okay? And then he mentioned how he likes her tablecloth. And of course, that's completely out of character. So she just laughed because she knew this was just stuff that he was making up because he wanted to talk with her. And this is a stark contrast and a big difference of how things were before. I was busy getting ready for work, so I was polite, but I wasn't fully in. Anyway, before he left with the kids, he was just standing at the door, looking up at me. Then, almost scared to do it, he reached out his hand and just slightly touched my arm and said, it's really nice to see you. Then he left. After that, he went away on holiday for a week, but he did call a couple times to talk to the kids. And I can honestly say I was okay with that. During that period, I was listening to a self-concept meditation and I was really connecting with it and listening. I was really connecting with it and listening to it nightly. During the day, I was going, excuse me, I was doing the affirmations you gave me and I added some new ones in. On the Saturday, after weeks of feeling good and in trust, I had an awful day. My head hurt. I was just missing him so much. I cried and let it all out, but I asked myself, do I truly believe we're meant to be? And as strong as anything, through the tears, the answer was still yes. For the first time, I didn't feel guilty or like I'd ruined my manifestation by allowing myself to feel this emotion. So then on the Monday, for the first time in two weeks, he was picking up the children. Again, he asked me to use the toilet. I said yes. He asked me if I was going out, and I said I wasn't sure, which I genuinely wasn't. And he started to say, I take it you're seeing someone then. I told him I wasn't, but he didn't believe me and asked again in a different way. I said, I've already answered you. And he got agitated and defensive when I wouldn't answer again for the third time. And he said, I'm just trying to talk to you, you wacko. <laughs> I kept my calm and said again, I'm not seeing anyone. I'm just not sure what I'm doing. And then I said for him to go and have fun with the kids. 
He said he was taking them out for tea and would I like to come? I politely declined. It just didn't seem like the right time. About 10 minutes after he left, he had texted me again to ask me if I'm seeing someone. And again, I answered no. He texted back to say sorry for asking. Five minutes later, he called and was asking what our daughter wanted from the menu. She's eight and can pretty much order for herself. Then again, he asked to come down. He asked if I would come down to have tea with them. I said, thank you for asking, but not today. And I went on with my day. When he brought them back, he came in and was again talking to me, asking me if I'm over us. He told me he's sorry for the things. And he said something about sometimes it takes time for a realization to happen. He told me he misses me and asked me if I miss him. I told him I do. He asked if he could have a hug. And when we hugged, he held me so tight. Then he went downstairs to say bye to the kids. Then he came back up again and asked for a second hug. He said it was nice to talk to me and see me. And then he left. Okay, Kim, that hug felt like home. When I was upset on the Saturday before this, I told myself I was feeling this out of the blue because he was feeling it. And this all just confirms that for me. So while she was feeling sad and all of that stuff that when she was crying, I hope you don't hear the dogs bark right now. She was affirming the reason why she feels that sadness is because he feels that too. And while you don't want to stay in that energy, when you are feeling things like that, yes, you do want to be remembering that the two of you guys are one. So if you're feeling sad, they are. If you're feeling scared, they are. If you're feeling love and trusting, they are. If you're like kind of feeling like, I don't know, something bad's going to happen again. Okay. So then you're always going to be proven right. Okay. Just the way it is. Okay. So then about an hour after he left, he just texted me. Thank you. Then we texted a bit that night, nothing important, just chit chat. He asked me what I was doing. And I said, I was in bed and he said, am I wearing nothing like I used to? I didn't like that because it made me scared that he was just after one thing. And so I said, I was tired and going to sleep. He said he didn't want to upset me, so he said goodnight, and he hopes I'm okay. So she she felt a need to put a boundary up because she didn't want to, she basically didn't want this to turn into like a booty call kind of thing. Totally respect that. The next day, he texted me asking me if I could help him with a job application, and I said I would. He came around, and, and I helped him. We chatted, and he sat really close to me and was stroking my feet. After I'd helped him, he was ready to leave. I was going to see him out and he asked me for a hug. He hugged me really tight and went to turn my face and I think he wanted to kiss me. At that time, was I was feeling like he was just trying to get me in bed, my own assumption, I know. And so I told him that I wasn't going to just be that. In that moment, I thought, I'm just going to tell him exactly how I feel. And I said, look, I love you today just as much as the day I met you. And I will love you that much until the day I die, but I'm not going to settle for just being a booty call. And she said, we have 17 years of history behind us. In that moment, I decided he wasn't the version of him that was showing up right for me. So I let that version go. The next day he called me whilst I was at work uh, asking about having the kids and where I'd like to come to see them and we can all have a takeaway. I said, yes, okay. And we hung out and he didn't try to hug me, kiss me or anything like that. I took that as that he was respecting me, what I said the day before. And see how it's very different from the perspective of where you're coming from. For From her perspective, that was him being respectful. And from a, a, a lot of other, many of you guys, you would take that as he doesn't care and he doesn't want to show me affection. But you see how it's always kind of from the perspective of, of you. He texted me asking if he was still okay to have the kids. And I said, yes. Then he asked me if he could ask me a question. I said he could. And he said, are you talking to someone now? I said, I wasn't. And he said, not even just texting someone. And I said, I just answered that I'm not. He said he was sorry and that he wasn't trying to upset me. I said it was okay. And I wasn't upset that I couldn't answer any different to how I had already answered when I said no, because that's the answer. He came and got the kids and then left. And so that's 
that's the story up until this point. You see how while she's doing her inner work and she's seeing little bits and pieces of him basically come around, but it's not fully of the end of them being back together, husband and wife yet. She's living from there. She's thinking from there and she's trusting in that. She's also putting up for her healthy boundaries in the 3D, trusting that it's all okay because she has such a good, strong love for herself. So she's put up healthy boundaries for herself. Again, it might be different for, for you, depending on how you see yourself and how you see a person, how you see the relationship. The other thing is she was very strong in her confidence in basically saying how she felt when she said, look, I love you the same now as I ever have, and I always will. And then the last thing is that as much as it's, it's, it's nice for her to see him coming around, there is something where, you know, it's good that she's remaining in her power and not trying to prove her love to him by just saying, hey, I've already said flat out, no, I'm not seeing anybody else. And I just, I really commend her. And I think that she's doing such a good job of remaining extremely strong, having a very healthy and strong self-concept and remaining faithful and loyal to her end. When we're manifesting things with an ex or somebody that we have a lot of history with, so you have a clear and concise picture in your mind of you being in your power, the best version of you and who your specific person is. If while you're in this bridge, because everything is a bridge and you want to assign, you want to assign positive meaning to everything that does happen. Don't, you don't want to be sitting at home crying and staying in the old story and hoping and wishing that they would change. You just see them as being somebody who is strong, determined to win your love back, determined to show you their value, show you their worth, determined to be the highest and best version of them, confident, secure, strong, fully healed, not letting you get away, okay? Because you mean the world to them and they just realize that. That's the version of you that you go into if this other version shows up. Do not settle for less. And if you really know who you are and the value you bring to your table. And you know that you were the best thing that ever happened to them. You need to be so incredibly confident and strong, knowing that no one will ever compare to you. I love you so much. Please do comment down below. Me and my SP are in a happy, blissful, stable, secure relationship. Reach out if you need me. I love you so much. I'll talk to you. Bye. Nothing can come, nothing can come, nothing can come between us.